Prog, metal, prog, and everything in between. If you're into rock, you've come to the right place. Welcome to this episode of Talkin' Rock with Meltdown. Don't forget to follow the audio-only Talkin' Rock podcast on all podcast platforms. And now, it's time for today's conversation. Here's Meltdown. Ah, there they are. How you guys doing? Hi. We're good. Doing great. Hey, thank you very oh, much. You? Thanks for having us. Sure. Before I start, uh, our our hometown Detroit Red Wings are in your country, aren't they? They are in, over here right now. Yeah. Oh, you guys didn't know that. Yeah, they're playing. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry, sports is like not one of our strengths. Strengths, like sorry. About that. <laughs> yeah, disappoint you maybe. I mean, I know that we are good in hockey and everything like this, but no. Yeah, yeah, you guys are great in hockey. As a matter of fact, uh, Nick Lindstrom is a friend of mine. I don't know if you guys recognize that name. Yeah, by name, by name. Yeah. Mm. But... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so you guys are coming to Detroit playing St. Andrews Hall on November 29th. Now, have you guys ever played there before? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. No, this is our this is our first tour we're ever doing in uh, in America. First time we're there. So Oh, no kidding. So I saw your tour and it looks like you guys are gonna be like kind of hitting up uh 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 you, no days off, right? It's just like a really quick in and out tour of uh, uh some big states in America. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it, is. it is. I mean, we didn't know what to expect because we never been over to the States. Like, we're about coming up from Sweden. We've been touring Europe for, like, some years. And, uh, like, we never actually, people always told us that, guys, you got to wait, wait for the right opportunity to go over there. Like, don't just go over there as a headliner. I just think that, you know, you can't just do that. And, you know, we never really got to the point where we, where we got that big offer. So we thought, like, okay, let's just book a small tour a short tour over there in North America to see what happens. And uh, yeah, so that's why it's not longer. And apparently it worked out really well. So, Well, uh, where you guys are playing here in Detroit is where um, where like the, the movie Eminem kind of is based out of. Are you guys familiar with that? Yeah. I actually just watched it the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've, I've seen it before, obviously, but I like I rewatched it now just a few days ago. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, if you go and, down, uh, we were we were actually supposed to play that venue that they were playing in uh, in the movie. Yeah, um, the shelter, right? Yep. Um, that was the first venue that we booked for Detroit, and then um, we we sold out the tour in like forty eight hours. So we upgraded all the venues. Yeah, I saw that. That's awesome. I saw you guys got pushed upstairs. So that's pretty cool. Well, of course, when you're here, you're gonna have to take a walk downstairs to see where all that Detroit history comes from. Yeah, <laughs> of course we have to. Yeah, so uh, that's great. You guys sold out here in Detroit. So tell everybody like what your band is about. Like I kind of have my own and in- impersonation, but here I'll I'll uh, I'll start with you. Like tell everybody what is the band about. Like like what do you, what do you guys uh, w- what kind of musical influences shaped uh, the band? Well, I mean, we are uh, me and Eddie actually know each other since going to since we were at school together. Like we were in like a parallel class to each other sort of say so i mean we've known each other since we were kids and i think we all really share the same musical influences coming up here from sweden obviously like in flames were like huge influence that for us it was like the biggest band in the world you know it was like the biggest thing that ever happened we listened to that so much i remember um like like scandinavian death metal i would say in general was definitely something we grew up with but also metalcore like in those days and where it was maybe the hottest thing you know like august prince red and these kind of bands you know that that was like really really big things for us but i wouldn't say maybe that this is our only influence like coming from from that area i know that eddie is like really influenced from like lincoln park and stuff like that right like originally yeah like i also listened a lot to new metal back in in high school um and that was like the catalyst i would say like this union of scandinavian metal and uh the new metal um and then we kind of got into like the more modern stuff like metal core you can kind of hear that in our sound as well um as the years progressed and now i feel like we're finding our way back to our roots like influencing our music still being this modern metalcore, but with more and more elements of like where we come from. Mm. Yeah, mm. I definitely hear the uh, metalcore for sure. That's why I wanted to ask you guys what you thought because I don't want to like put words in, in your guys' mouth. Uh, but I hear that for sure. So, um, how important is it for a band from Sweden to come over to America and play? I mean, for us, I think it's definitely was uh, 
it, it's really, really big uh, milestone for us to, to do that, to make the step over and actually being able to do our own headline tour, even though it's it's a pretty short one. Um, because I think that being a European act and being able to tour over here and, and get your name out there in this territory is one thing because logistically you can do it, you know, but but for us, um, maybe for any European band to go over states and, and find that you really have an audience there, um, having like never set foot there before is, is really telling you something that you actually have this actually worldwide sort of, or at least like international recognition. So it's, it's really remarkable for us. It's really huge. It's really incredible. I mean, we've been touring now, it's actually nine years since we went on our first European uh, tour. Um, so we've done a lot of Europe over the years and we've just been waiting for the opportunity to come to America. Like Carol said before, kind of waiting for the right opportunity. Uh, but then we just decided to take the matters into our own hands and it's worked fantastic. Yeah, it's funny just thinking yeah. about this because I know that you guys went to school together and you guys kind of, you know, you guys are the original members of the band. But it's like when I was your guys' age going to school, when I went to, you know, back in the day, it's like you didn't have the internet and all this stuff to like kind of, um, you know, put your music around the entire planet. I mean, people were... Yeah people would share tapes. I remember talking to the guys from Seether in South Africa and they would, you know, they, they'd get bootleg tapes of Motley Crue when they were kids growing up. So now <laughs> I guess the world's become a little bit smaller, hasn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I think today it's more about um, as long as you find your audience, like you can find your audience, you can do that yourself, sort of. Like if you if you learn how, how the industry works and if you learn to like play your cards right, you can find your own audience just by your own means. I mean, you're not limited to only being um, placed in the right context thanks to like a record label or so. I mean, today it is much easier that you can actually connect directly with your fans wherever they might be. And uh, that's maybe something we have built up through the years we've been in band. And uh, yeah, we've been getting like a lot of requests over many years, people asking us like every day, like, when are you coming to the States? And yeah, so finally, yeah, here we are. Yes, yeah, so that show's coming up on the 29th. I may have to take a, a ride down to St. Andrew. That's a beautiful place here in Detroit. They just uh, revamped it a, a few years back. You know, uh, not having dug into a lot of your guys' music, but right off the top of my head, like uh, Bad Omens and I Prevail, they just uh, headlined here in Detroit at Riff Fest. Uh, do those bands, uh, are those bands in your wheelhouse? I mean, of course, we're familiar with them in that case. I mean, there's like really hot names in the scene right now, I would say. So of course, we know them. We know everything that's going on in the States. Um, but I would say maybe being up here in Sweden, I guess maybe we have a different like connection because we're not like living in everything that's, you know, that where all the tours are happening. And so like we're a bit more isolated up here in the North, maybe, I don't know. So, uh, I think we're just watching everything from distance, then just flying in, do our thing. And then we just can fly back, come back someday, maybe. So, so Eddie, you mentioned, uh, Lincoln Park, uh, how much does Chester Bennington influence you over your life? Uh, I mean, it was a, an incredible inspiration for me. Like Chester Bennington and Anders Friedan from In Flames were like the two, two like vocalists that really inspired me to start like singing for myself. So, uh, Linkin Park had a really huge influence on me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's funny you guys mentioned In Flames because I've seen In Flames a couple times. I think they toured with Hell Yeah one time here. And they actually did an acoustic mm. thing for us for like some radio station winners. And I took my son and stuff, but we were in a, we were in a room smaller than this. <laughs> and you guys <laughs> bringing up in flames, and I got to see him do this like un, un, you know this this unplugged acoustic thing right in front of me. So that was pretty cool. Nice. That's incredible. Well, I wonder which song did they do? Do you remember which song? Uh, I, this is like this is going back like it's got to be eight or ten years ago. It was, it was a long time ago, but I just remember. You being, think it, it could be like Alias or something like that because I remember they did like a. TV show here uh, in Sweden as well, where they did some acoustic versions of um, some songs from A Sense of Purpose. Yeah, yeah. You guys keep bringing up that band, and, and so that must be, like, obviously play a huge influence. So, growing growing up in Sweden, you got you, you were just talking about it, Harold. It's like it's like not a lot. Of, do, do a lot of tours come through? There? I don't even know how that works. No. Oh, no. Okay. no. <laughs> it used to be different. Like when we were like when we were kids. It was actually, you know, we could actually go see bands playing club shows over here. Mm. Um, but at the same, you know, it was always way, way smaller. Like, let's say 
I don't know really, what, what it was around like maybe 2008 or nine or something where you could go to like see mm -hmm. club shows with uh, like Lamb of God and Joe for Cowboy touring in packages on like a yeah, or yeah, yeah, you Architects could, could... Bring Me the Horizon, like mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah, but, but these things, yeah, no, not really, not re uh, not at all, actually. Yeah, do you guys have to travel to go see like big festivals and stuff? Is that how it works? We had we had one great festival. We had really one that um, unfortunately is not around anymore called Metal Town in Gothenburg. <laughs> um, that that we went to, you know, when we were sixteen years old, and so like that was like enormous for us. Uh, there is one big festival over here called Sweden Rock, but it's. It's really like more classic rock stuff, you know, when it comes to metal. And so it's it's really not that thing. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I, I guess that's, you know, we're such a small population on a big land surface. So I, I think that's why uh, bands up here are just going abroad to tour. And so because you can't just make a domestic career in that way, like you really need to go somewhere else. Yeah, I saw a meme the other day on the Internet and it was like, uh, you know, uh, Swedish death metal guys and where they live. And it's like this beautiful house and, and this scenic landscape and stuff. It was kind of funny. So, Eddie, why is there so much heavy music that comes out of your part of the world? I don't know. <laughs> well, you I know think, what uh, yeah, there's, there's always that question, you know, like why are there so many great Swedish songwriters or um, yeah, many like great metal bands coming out of Sweden and uh, I guess it's something here in the air, you know, or maybe the limited amount of sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy, but I don't know. I don't know why it is like that. I just think that since, let's say, like I don't know, fifty years back, you know, when ABBA just made it so big because they were really, really huge, and that was the pretty much the only international act that we had at the time. There was nothing else before that, really. And I think that that just you know paved the way for a whole new generation of like. I don't know, musicians and songwriters and creative folks that were just looking up to that and be like, wow, you know, we could do that too. You know, it's not impossible. And I believe they just started like an enormous industry. And then obviously later on in the 90s, we had like the Chayron studios were all like the, the pop songs like Britney Spears and Braxy Boys and everything. All those songs were written in Stockholm, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that is just, you know, everything just opened up from there. Harold, what kind of uh, guitar players uh, influenced you growing up? Growing up, I mean, what, I mean, you had to pick up a guitar at one point. Something had to had to. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, of course, of course. Like when when you when you start off, you just want to play what everyone like everything that you hear. You want to look up to your guitar gods, like you know Angus from AC/DC, and then you want to sound like Kurt from Metallica or something like that, like that. But I think maybe today you can see traces from, of course, in Flames and stuff like that. But then later on, I got into other influences. Maybe you can't hear it, but. Maybe the approach to the instrument, maybe like, you know, um, was very important for me for guitarists like John Mayer, for example, um, that really, really gave me a, yeah, what was a big inspiration for sure. Yeah. By the way, I don't make you guys jealous, but uh, I just spent two nights watching Metallica, uh, you know, over the weekend here. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty fried. I have to admit it was a, it was a long weekend here in Detroit with uh, Pantera <laughs> and Five Finger and Ice Nine Kills and uh, Wolfgang Van Halen. Um but uh, yeah, I I I don't want to make you guys jealous because you said none of those big tours come over there. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> so, so Eddie, what do you guys got coming up in uh, 2024? 2024. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a secret uh, for much longer. But yeah, we are uh, planning to release our new album. Um, we've just been releasing singles this year. And uh, we have some more stuff coming out. And then, of course, completing with the album. And, um, yeah, it's also not a secret. Like, we announced some festival in the U.S. And, um, so, yeah, we're definitely going to come back in the spring. You guys are playing one of the Danny Wimmer festivals? The what? Sorry? Uh, the Danny Wimmer festivals. He does all those big festivals across uh, America. Uh, we we announced that we're doing Welcome to Rockville. So, That's a is that yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dude, that's, learning. that's awesome. I'm so happy for you guys. That's going to be an amazing Thank experience. You. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, in, that's incredible, really. I mean, one year ago, we were just thinking like, man, are we ever going to go over to the States? And then <laughs> here we are. It's like, okay, we're going to do Rockville. It's going to be great. 
Yeah, that's amazing. They just they just announced that lineup. Uh, which day are you guys playing on? Ooh, I can try to check. Oh, that's here. right. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't uh, worry. That's no big deal. But yeah, it's like um they they kind of try to keep the bands kind of similar throughout. The, they might have like a like more of like a classic metal day and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, you guys will probably be playing with uh, a lot of bands kind of of your same ilk, so to speak. Uh, but uh, those are big festivals, and um, I've never been to Welcome to Rockville, but I've been to some of the other ones, and they are uh they are a massive, uh, really good time. Cool. Looking so, forward, forward to it a lot. So tell me more about the new album. Uh, when when can we expect uh, that to drop? <laughs> Ooh, <can't> you, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I don't. I don't want to. You know. I don't... Um. So let let's say like this. I mean, the album is being mixed right now. Um, and then we will have to see. You know, with production times taking into consideration for the vinyls and everything, but uh, can definitely count on next year for sure. <laughs> Now, um, if I'm not mistaken, did you guys drop a record right during or at the beginning of the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, middle of it. Yeah, I would say so in the middle of it was like late 2021, yeah. so almost two years ago. Okay, so, uh, what was it like dropping a record at that point? It's weird in a way. Couldn't really follow up and say, "Here's the album tour." Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that was the strangest part of it, but I f did feel like people were really thankful for music by that point, you know, um, and because they couldn't go outside. And and so people were so excited about new releases being put out. And I didn't feel like I, I'm, I didn't feel like it affected us like negatively. I think it was even better for us than we expected. Um, but yeah, it was a bit strange to not go on a tour. Um, we had to postpone it a few times. Like we never put it on sale, but we, you know, we made the arrangements to announce the tour, and then we kind of had to push it again. And um, but yeah, we were lucky enough to tour it like uh, six months after the album was dropped, something like that. And that was and I mean, in that we were also lucky, like me and Eddie, being able to actually meet up and and use a lot of the time where we. Would have been on the road and we're home instead you know obviously no tours mm. possible uh because we didn't have any lockdowns over here there were no lockdowns to me and it could still meet up and we did a lot of writing during that time so yeah that's right i totally forgot about that yeah you guys uh you guys just lived your lives <laughs> uh, well, more yeah, or less or the, yeah yeah pretty much that's right. I forgot all about that. So were you guys uh did when you guys said you toured after that was that just primarily like over in Europe? Yeah, we did uh, the album tour for Heaven and Hiding in Europe. Yeah, and that's pretty much uh, where you've only toured up till now. Do um, in European territory, like as just in general, where yeah, of course, like European European territory, like of course Europe, UK, Scandinavia. Um, we uh, we were once over to Russia, like before everything, yeah, took another turn of development there. Um, so some Eastern countries as well um but yeah yeah all right so final thing here for you guys what uh eddie i'll start with you what's the thing you're most looking forward to seeing here in america or doing um the thing that excites me the most is to be honest the shows um because we've waited for this for such a long time i know that the fans coming out to the shows have been waiting sometimes for many years followed us from the start and I think that's going to be an incredible experience for both of us. And it just kind of waits. Hey, what about you, Harold? Oh, that's a really good question. That's a really good question. I don't know what to expect, really. You know, uh, I, I want to see, like, I'm really looking forward to seeing New York City. Like, really? I mean, sorry, like, I know when this on Detroit, I, I want to see that too. But <laughs> it's just one of those things that, like, Damn, we're gonna be in Times Square, you know. It's a bit unrealistic. Of course, uh, yeah. Of course, it's uh some consider it the center of the the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've only spent twenty four hours there, so I'm no expert on a uh, on Times Square or a uh, New York City at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for you guys to come over here and uh, get a chance to check it out, and then of course come back. So if you're coming back here next year for that uh for that one off festival, are you guys gonna be touring? Are you guys gonna be having uh, other dates here uh, next summer as well? It's very possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah. I, all right. Keep so, your eyes open. Yeah, you you have a record coming out next year. We're not sure when or what it's about, and you might be playing dates over here. So that's all we. Can <laughs> about, so, <laughs> well, listen, uh, guys, thank you so much for your time. Uh, good luck. Uh, I'm I'm really super fired up. I might have to try to come down and check you guys out uh, in person at St. Andrews Hall coming up on November 29th. Yeah, please do. Please do. Yeah, safe travels and say it with me. Go Wings, because they're playing again. This Go year. Wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers, man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having us here. All right. Thank you guys so much.